Um, when, um, when we're looking at our files, we've got to make sure that during the conversion, um, you know, our special characters, which are like things like the copyright symbol or uh, foreign, um, foreign, you know, uh, foreign language characters or, um, you know, special equation characters or anything like that, um, that they're treated um, correctly, right? Um, and so what the hub does is actually it'll take, um, in the XML file, you'll see that everything is, um, I think it's hexadecimal. Uh, the, the hub will actually, when converting to SAM, will make those literal characters. So you should actually see the copyright symbol rather than, you know, X0029 or whatever it might be. Um, and so we're, what we do here is we just use this search, um, and this is a regular expression search, um, in our SAM file to make sure that everything is okay, right? Um, and this search is for combining Unicode. So for example, if you have an E and then the combining Unicode for an acute and it's supposed to be one, there is actually a Unicode uh, character for E with an acute. So you should be using that rather than combining characters and things like that. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and run through that search, right? Again, remember that this button here just copies to the clipboard, right? So you don't have to like select the text or anything like that. You can just click that and we'll copy that to the click uh, to the clipboard. We go back to Sublime. In Sublime, again, Control F or Command F for Mac. Um, that will bring up the search, and you'll want to paste that in Control V uh, or Command uh, V on the Mac. Right? And this will bring up um, several uh, instances. You'll see that down here. Actually, let me make this larger here, and you'll see that here on the bottom left. So um, if that isn't working for you, if you pasted that in and you're not hitting any searches, just make sure that regular expressions are turned on. It's this little button, which is the period and the asterisk. Um, we also have several options that we just leave on constantly, uh, which is case sensitivity that makes our searches more specific um, and highlight matches, which highlights every instance that it finds. It makes it really easy to sort of find um, issues and wrap, which allows the search to uh, wrap around once it hits the end. It doesn't just stop and say, hey, I reached the end of the document. It actually allows you to keep searching for issues wrapping around the, um, the entire document. Um, so here you'll see that we'll have these, yeah, yeah. I had a suspicion that that might come up because that's something that we have as a default here. But you know, when we first install Sublime, that is by default off. Um, so here um, we have 17 matches. Most of those matches in this document are going to be um, the curly braces because those are. Um, special um, special characters, but they are being treated as what we need them to be treated. So we're just gonna go ahead and just continuously hit find next until we find an actual special character. And I believe that the copyright symbol should be the only one in this uh, document. So you'll see the copyright symbols there and it's an actual copyright symbol rather than uh, you know the hexadecimal or some kind of formatting. Um, character. Um, so in this case, if you were to take this and paste this into any other uh, word processor or text editor, it would stay as a copyright symbol because it is a uh, valid Unicode. In your SAM files, you always want to make sure you have Unicode characters because again, uh, when you're going from one thing, uh, one program to another, if it's you know just being rendered as the copyright symbol here, um, you'll lose that information when you move from one program to another, which is what's happening um, like for, uh, for example, what you guys were talking about earlier, uh, moving from like the Google Doc to, you know, Pressbooks or something like that. The formatting in the Google Docs is just getting lost as you convert. This allows us to maintain things um, throughout. All right. And so we'll continue searching. There we go. We reached 17 of 17 matches. We know that our special characters are okay. So we should be good to go. All right. So we'll go back to the QC. And then this is going to actually ask you to, the next step is going to actually ask you to do some slight editing. It's very small. Is, and this next step is removing page numbers from the table of contents. Uh, can anyone tell me why you would remove page numbers from the table of contents? Yeah. 
you can take a stab in the dark. Don't worry about it. There we go. Richard got just right, right? There are no longer any pages, right? Remember, it's reflowable text. We move from this very like sort of static. We have this in print. It has to be on this page and so on and so forth to reflowable text. So you do not need uh, page numbers um, in digital text, right? So we go back and we go to our contents, which we actually see here. The CTFM is our contents, and we see that chapter one begins on page two. So all we have to do is select it and delete, right? And then just go through. Um, oftentimes you can see that there's a pattern here. There's a tab right before uh, the page number, right? So that gives you a clue as to what it is without you having to go back to the PDF and say, okay, is this a page number? Is this part of the text or whatnot, right? So you can do that either manually like this but if for example again you have this 600 page document um and it has multiple it has you know uh, a pretty large table of contents um you can actually do this um uh, globally right and so yes and tim just added that sometimes um typesetters can add toc num to those and then you can search for those and, and remove them so you can search and remove oh there you go we'll automatically uh, they'll be removed on export. See, there's still a typo on line 38. There you go. Let's fix that. There you go, Richard. We got it. I know that capital H was bothering you. <laughs> so what we'll do now is I'll show you how to do this globally, right? Um, if you hit control H, right, on, uh, on PC, I believe it, um, I don't know what Sublime's gonna do now, so it might be Command H on Mac um, or Control H on Mac. That will bring up the find and replace, and you'll see that you'll have these two, uh, these two fields to fill in now, right? And you can use um, regular expressions or just regular text to search for um, a pattern and then replace that with something else, right? So um, slash T is the regular expression for Command Option F on Mac. See, Sublime's just getting all, all sorts of tricky on Mac, right? Um, so slash T is um, the regular expression for tabs, right? As you can see, it immediately highlighted, okay, you have a tab here and a tab here. And then I say, okay, I'm searching for a tab followed by a number, right? Um, and you can do slash D, which is digit um, and a plus. Uh, the plus just means one or more, so that handles uh, two-digit numbers, three-digit numbers, and so on. And as you can see, it found um, it found the tab, found the one, it found the zero, and it did the same here: tab one and the five. And this is a very simple uh, regular expression. It's just thinking of a pattern. And again, we're not going to delve too much into regular expressions because it's not something that you necessarily need. Um, but if you do need any kind of refresher or if you've already done this um, or you need you know, further instruction on those, uh, you can always feel free to contact us and we'll help you along with that. And there are uh, a lot of tools online that help you practice and we've linked those um, in the modules as well, right? Now that we've created this sort of this pattern here that we're searching for a tab followed by a digit of one or more um, characters or digits, um, we can just get rid of them, right? And we, if we leave nothing in here and go over here, the bottom right and hit replace all, it'll actually just go through and replace all of those with nothing. So whenever you see a regular expression that says replace with nothing, that's what it means. It's nothing in the actual uh, part. Now, um, Here's something I will recommend, and this is just best practices, never hit replace all the first thing that you do, um, because especially when you're creating regular expressions, um, you could actually uh, end up like switching characters around, doing things, they're very powerful tools. Um, so you always wanna test your regular expressions when you're running them, um, if you are going to be doing that. Um, so we'll step away from the granular here um, and go back to our QC list. Uh, there are no notes in our file, but here you would actually just do a quick search for these tags, en, en num, en ref, fn, fn num, fn ref, if you do have those uh, types of notes. Actually, I've, I seem to have hopped over one because, of course, right? Um, but you would want to first, let's step back for a moment, um, search if there are any tabs. Again, 
tabs don't mean anything um, in SAM. They're just treated as if they were a space, right? So we're going to go through, right? And again, slash T, remember that is the regular expression for tabs. And we can go through, bring up the control H, the find and replace. And I typed in just a space here in the replace with. So that way when I hit find, replace, it replaced the tab with a space. Right? And I can do that throughout and say, okay, this is okay. And then just do that throughout. There weren't that many of them, so I was just able to just go ahead and replace them all in one shot. Um, you could, again, you could hit replace all, but it's always good to test um, your uh, regular expressions because, for example, here, were I to have not included the space, I would have ended up not only deleting the tabs, but I would have ended up slamming um, you know, the numbers and number list up against the actual text of the list item. Um, so always test your regular expressions or any searches that you run for that matter. Right. So we'll go back to our QC list here. Right. And as I was saying earlier, um, we don't have any notes in this file, so we're not going to actually check this. But um, if you do have notes, you want to make sure that the number of ENs, EN nums, and EN refs match, and that the numbers of FN, FN num, and FN ref match. And all you would need to do um, is go into, subl into Sublime with your SAM file open and uh, search for EN, note that number, search for EN num, note that number, um, and EN ref and note that number. Now, the Digital Hub also does that for you automatically, so you can you know, just upload your sentence to the Digital Hub, um, and it will count that uh, for you. It'll actually bring up an error if they're not matched up. Uh, continued lines, which sometimes are used in indexes. There you go, Tim. Um, is that exactly um, what I was going to say in... Um, in the chat there. Um, continuing lines are used in indexes and in print documents when, for example, an entry moves on to another line. Um, you don't need those in digital text because the text is reflowable and it will reflow uh, correctly and it might not actually fit where, where the continue line might not actually fit where, um, where they are um, in the print uh, document, in the digital document. So what you would want to do um, is you'd want to search. You can actually just search for the word continued and make sure that, um, you know, that it's not, you know, part of the text, that it's, if it's, you know, in parentheses, in italics at the end of an index, you can actually just go ahead and remove it. Um, again, we don't have that in our file, and for the sake of time, we're not going to go through that, right? And here you'll see something similar to what we did with the uh, composition. Uh, QC, where you have a list of regular expressions. Again, you don't need to know what exactly they're searching for, uh, but this actually explains it for you. Um, and then you just copy, paste into Sublime, and check your output. So we're going to go do, do that, and I'm not going to stop for each one, again, just for the sake of time, um, and also because it's repetitive. But at this point, all you're doing is uh, putting in the regular expression and then checking to make sure um, whether it's a valid search. Tim. Um, I think wanted to add something. Yeah, I'm just going to chime in and say that at this stage in the game, I think you start to see a lot of um, redundancy in some of the searches. Mm -hmm. So you'll see similar searches uh, that we do in the FDML portion mm -hmm. of this. Um, a lot of that is just because our, our searches aren't, or our QC checklists aren't designed to say like, well, clearly you must have composed this file and types that are using our workflow. So mm -hmm. you know, at any stage in the game, you could be entering into the workflow. So that's why they kind of bring up these searches that seem repetitive, but it's just because it's not assuming that you've done them already. Mm -hmm. Right. And so, and jumping off of that vein, so if you know, for example, um, that you've already run this search during SAM, you know, you don't need to run the same search in SAML, you know, because you will, you know what's in there. Um, you could it, run it, like I personally run it all the time, like the same searches over again just because I'm OCD that way. Um, so, um, but that's an option um, for you. So, you know, keep in mind that these checklists are just that, they're checklists uh, to make sure that you catch as much of it as possible, but it, you don't have to run each and every um, um, item if you've already run it before and if this has been, you know, existing in the, in the workflow. So I'll just run quickly through this and here I will go a little bit quicker than I have been um, just for the sake of time, but I'm just going to be hopping back and forth. By the way, if you just saw how that flashed, that was alt tab on 
um, on PC. I'm not sure what that option is on Mac, but that allows you to switch between your most recent option, um, open window and um, between your two most recent uh, open windows. Um, it's useful because it allows you to do what I'm about to do now, which I'm going to copy here, go back to Sublime, paste it in, no matches. So I'm just going to say, okay, that's good. Copy this, paste it in there again, no matches, hitting fine just in case. 